So when it comes to our Layer 2 MPLS VPN solutions, we are dealing with a Layer 2 infrastructure in the service provider's network. Typically Ethernet. That's the most common approach. So as a result, our interconnections on our routers here are simply just Ethernet interfaces connected up to that Layer 2 environment. And if you have two routers, folks, connected to the same Layer 2 infrastructure, they're going to be in the same subnet. And that's what we're dealing here with the Layer 2 MPLS VPN solution. These router interfaces are going to be in the same subnet. And as a result, if you're implementing any type of dynamic routing protocol, we're going to have neighborships formed between these two routers over that Layer 2 MPLS VPN backbone. Now, there's two different options for Layer 2 MPLS VPN connectivity. You have your point-to-point -point Layer 2 MPLS VPN solution, like we see here. But what if we needed to have another router connected up? For example, if we have a router here, and we want to connect that router up to the uh, VPN and provide connectivity for our users, well, we can set it up as well so that instead of having a point-to-point -point VPN solution, now we have three routers connected up. We will end up in a multi-point Layer 2 VPN solution, and all three of these routers could form neighborships with EIGRP or OSPF. The Layer 3 MPLS VPN backbone, which at this point in time seems to be the most popular uh, option that people are choosing, requires us to form neighbor adjacencies with provider edge routers. Why? Because we're dealing with layer three through the MPLS VPN backbone. And when we're dealing with layer three, we're dealing with many different subnets, many different layer three networks inside that infrastructure. It, there, there could be 50 or 100 of them in between R1 and R2. So what happens in this case is we form neighbor adjacencies between our router, the customer edge router, R2, and the provider edge router, our service provider's router, on both ends. Why? Because these are completely different subnets. And in order to form an EIGRP or OSPF neighbor adjacency, we have to be on the same subnet. So in this case, we form the neighbor adjacency with the provider, and then from there, the provider using MPLS as the underlying technology, is going to take our traffic that arrives in on this router here and send it across the MPLS backbone over to their other provider edge router on the other side based on the labels that have been implemented. And then it'll end, back, end up back on our customer edge router on R1. But here's the thing you have to realize. There's going to be redistribution happening here. As you go, for, for example, from EIGRP over on R2, over here, into the service provider's network, they then redistribute that into multi-protocol BGP, so that way there they can send it through their MPLS Layer 3 backbone out the other side, and then on the other side it gets redistributed back into whatever routing protocol is being used on the other side. So you don't need to use the same routing protocol on each end. You could use EIGRP on one side, OSPF on the other side. It really all depends what you and your service provider decide to use and what you are using inside your local infrastructure. And as a result, it's just being redistributed through that Layer 3 MPLS VPN backbone.